and um, we're going to grow the garden up. We're going to bring you along for the ride. Hope you enjoy it. Here we go.
given to us by a relative, been sitting in the relative's yard for a while, and um, their husband passed away, didn't use it anymore, and they gave it to us. And um, it was a little warped, it looked like somebody hit it, or they got bent somehow, so it's we're having to go over the road a second time because one side. Even though just to my top links out and everything, um, it still wants to warp up and not do right. So we are doing our best to get the garden road up. It's working. I had to make a couple handful of extra passes, but it's uh, it's getting the job done. We're gonna get the torch to it and build a new frame for it or straighten it out one or the other when uh, after the season's over with so we got plenty of time to it down next time we'll need it it's getting it's doing what we need to do now which is roll up when we get this garden planted we got rain coming in the next few days must be pretty good rain so I'm, I'm, my, my prayer is that we'll get these uh, these uh, Get these seeds in the ground and we'll have us something. Have us something growing. But we sure do need to uh, grow our own food. And I'm sure all of y'all have noticed that. Of course, I, the first thing, prices of everything in the store. And then, second of that, the quality. I mean, do we truly know where our food comes from, how it's grown, what chemicals are put on it, what's not put on it, what kind of nutrients are used. So that's like this garden here, we did, uh, we did a soil sample and we looked where our pH was at and our, our NPK and uh, our salts and uh, we amended it and we used as much organic stuff as we could. Pretty much all. And we've got some Fertilizer we're going to use is, is we've got a compost pile we've been putting rabbit poop in for ooh, close to a year. So that's going to be some of the best fertilizer we can use. And we still may have to use a few commercial things. I mean, look, the reality is, is you have to use some things. You know, we're going to use some phosphorus here and there. We're going to use as much as we can organically, you know, but if anybody on here follows Mr. Danny King of Deep South Homestead, I've learned so much from him. You know, when you use organic stuff, it takes a while for it to break down in the soil. It's not immediate, so some things you need to be able to put it on there. You need a quick action, you know, corn, your nitrogen on your corn, your phosphorus for getting things to bloom. So, We'll probably use a handful of commercial stuff, but when we do, we try to use the best possible stuff that we know is sourced well and is, you know, not too harsh. But, um, we're just trying to get the garden growing, know where our food comes from. We're trying to grow enough to, you know, put back, can, freeze, and then, you know, if we've got some food family or friends or we've learned somebody that needs some food and is having a rough, rough time we want to be able to help them and have plenty so but the most important thing that a lot of people do on a garden you know especially the uh, homeowner and he decides he wants to do a garden they just till it up and put it in the ground and you've got to do a soil sample it is the most important thing you can do for your garden because if you don't know what's in the ground what nutrients and all then you, you're, you're losing a losing battle of hill your, your acidity is like you're too acidic you're too alkaline certain plants need certain things you know, most gardens need a neutral b8 somewhere in the middle around 7.2 7.4 somewhere in there most plants thrive at that you've got some things like blueberries i think they like a little bit of if I'm wrong, they like it to be a little bit acidic. 
But um, but you've got to know those things. It's, gardening is more than just throwing seeds in the ground. You have got to plan. You've got to test your soil. Know what you got. And, um, you know, amend it accordingly. And then another big part is not it? part of it is knowing what you're planting, what you can plant next to what. There's some plants that you don't want to plant next to things. You know, you, know, you got to sit down and do your research and say, all right, this plant will grow next to this plant. It won't be a problem. You know, beans are nitrogen fixers. So if you've got another plant that needs heavy nitrogen, say corn, you plant your beans close to your corn. And it'll not only it make beans, beans make their own nitrogen, it'll help the corn out a little bit. So got those things that you don't learn overnight so I'm still learning um, that's for sure I am still learning every day I follow people on YouTube that are that I'm going to call them master gardeners they may not have a certificate been to school well you've been gardening 40 years of your life 50 years then you then you know what you're talking about I had a neighbor growing up Mr. F.C. McClellan we called him Mr. Matt that man grew a garden every year. And even though I was a, I was a little kid, nine, ten years old, eleven years old, <coughs> I'd go out there and he would let me run his little help run his Troy build and he'd let me and my mother pick a little stuff out of his garden and I'd help him just do whatever, weed the garden. He, he taught me a little bit and that's a little bit that I remember from back then, not a whole lot because I was young, but that's kind of sparked the interest. I've always enjoyed gardening. And um uh, now I'll do it to feed my family because it's number one, it's healthier. And it's fun gardening. You know where your food's coming from. You know that you grew it, you know what you put in it. You know what you've done to it, what fertilizers you've used. And you know, I'd be willing to bet, and I don't know I don't know if this statistic is true, but I'd be willing to bet that. I grow a tomato or a cucumber or something in my garden and I go buy one off the shelf from any grocery store, I'm going to have more nutrients in mine than that grocery store. Just because of the commercial farming. They're putting stuff to it to make it grow. they just trying to produce the fruit. I'm sure there's some organic farmers here and there that, are, that care about making it healthy, but your commercial farms, no, not saying they're out to get you by any means, but their goal is to grow whatever fruit they're growing and grow it quickly and grow it where it looks nice. And now they're putting all these preservatives on food. If you don't know it, there's, there's you go buy fruit in the store. 90, <laughs> I'm gonna say 95 percent. My stats probably not a 100 percent, 100 percent correct, but I'm gonna say the majority has preservatives on it to keep it looking nice in that grocery store so it ain't sit there longer, so it doesn't ruin it. So, that's uh, another thing you've got to worry about too. You know, when you're growing your own food, you set a tomato from your garden out, it's probably not gonna last a week, but what you do with that tomato is you, you eat it up quickly, and what you don't eat, you put it in the, uh, you put it in the, you freeze it, you put it, or you can it. We've got, we anticipated a garden this year, so we've probably got, whoo, we went on a buying spree and bought four or five hundred jars, because we were planning on doing a, a pretty decent sized garden. So my wife's planning on doing canning this year. She, she wants to get into it and seems to think she's going to enjoy it. I'm sure it's going to be work. But uh, that's our goal is to have fresh food and to put up what we don't have and you know by canning it and freezing it you have it for later. I've even thought about doing some uh, dehydrating. You can buy your own at home dehydrators and then freeze dry and also really would love to freeze dry. You can freeze dry food and it keeps the nutrients. When you dehydrate it, it'll lose a little bit. Um, not a whole lot but it loses some. So there's, there's so many options to have healthy food. You just got to put the work in and do it. Which is not difficult. It's just a learning process, you know? 
just do it and get after it. And if you fail, hey, you learn something and you know to do it different next time. One thing we're going to try to do this year is save our own seeds. That's another thing that nobody, everybody goes and, you know, you plant your garden, you go buy seeds from the store. And of course we did, you have to, but we're also going to save seeds this year from uh, different things. And when you save your own seeds, it, you know, the plant's no different than a human. It, after a while, it gets acclimated to its environment. So if you you save seeds from your tomatoes, your corn, you know, anything, peppers, and all your vegetables, you will have plants that are hardy for your area. So that's what we plan on doing. Honestly, everything, if we have, if we make enough, and we plan on saving a little bit of everything, and um, that way, is, you know, you continue to grow that seed every year in the same general area, you will have seeds that are used to the environment, used to the dirt, used to the microbes that are in your particular soil, because, you know, from place to place, the microbes change, you know, generally the same. Take care. Thank you from Atala Farms Homestead.